here today as part of a nationwide outcry a movement led by Code Pink and many other organizations who mobilized essentially overnight against Trump's, Trump's reckless and lawless actions in Iraq. To join, we are joining thousands across the country to say no to war in Iran and no to the forever wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. In 2006, I was part of organizing a meeting for members of a group called Iraq Veterans Against the War. And one of the young veterans who was there, I will call her Sarah, she attended the meeting and it was her first time attending uh, any kind of anti-war or activist meeting. She talked with me about how she came from a working class family and she enlisted as a teenager after 9-11 because she wanted to serve her country and she wanted to go to college. And she told me about the chaos and the killing and the epidemic of sexual violence against service, service members such as herself and the post-traumatic stress that resulted. Dave. 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 And her husband was there at the meeting as well. He served in Fallujah in 2004. And he showed me some photos of that time that I will never forget, especially the photo of a young girl's bedroom. He had, was part of a home invasion, and he told me about how he never forgot the image of them escaping through the window with these glittery pink curtains of her, of her room. And a few days after the meeting, I got a call from him that Sarah was gone. She took her life, and he was serving. He was a National Guard uh, member of the National Guard, and um, he told me he was thinking about going to Canada. And I never heard from him again. And that is what the Iraq War did to my generation. That is what the Iraq War did to this country. I was on Facebook last night inviting all of you to come to this rally and the way that works is I have to go through the list of all of my friends in no particular order <laughs> and going through that list I saw many of the veterans that I had worked with over the years who were members of Iraq Veterans Against the War who are scattered now throughout the country trying to move on with their lives. And I saw one name that made my heart stop, and that was Joshua Castile. Joshua Castile volunteered for the Army in 2002. He was an Arabic translator. He conducted interrogations in the Abu Ghraib prison. He was a deeply religious person. The conversations we had were always of a spiritual nature. And in October of 2004, he interrogated a self-professed jihadist from Saudi Arabia. And when Castile asked this prisoner, why did you come to Iraq to kill? He turned the tables and asked Joshua, why did you come to Iraq to kill? And he claimed that, that Joshua failed to follow Christ. And this led to a spiritual crisis for Joshua and led him to apply to be a, a conscientious objector and to leave Iraq and to leave the service. And he became an activist. He was a leader in IVAW and he wrote a book called Letters from Abu Ghraib, which was published uh, in part in Harper's Magazine. And I had the honor of knowing him and fighting beside him. He died in 2012 of lung cancer after he had applied for a CO. He was assigned to guard a burn pit and he told me about what they burned in that pit. Cars, depleted uranium, plastic of all kinds. He believed that his lung cancer was a direct result of those exposures. This was what the Iraq war did to my generation. And that's why I'm here. 
I'm here with the memories of Sarah and Joshua and with Steve and Johannes and Rajiv and we are taking a stand to say no. No war in Iran and we must do more than just stop a war in Iran. We must commit to ending the U.S. military presence in the Middle East in an orderly manner. We must end U.S. involvement in the Saudi-led intervention in Yemen. We must bring our troops home from Iraq and Afghanistan. That is what I have spent my entire adult life fighting for, and I'm not stopping now, and I am apologizing to nobody. Because I am running for Congress, because the United States has spent over three trillion dollars in Iraq. For what? For oil. For Exxon. For Halliburton. For the fossil fuels that are ruining our earth and creating the crisis that we're seeing, like the infernos raging in Australia right now. Three trillion dollars. For what? Nothing. For Nothing. Northrop Grumman and UTC Sikorsky and Boeing and General Dynamics who all donate handsomely to both parties, even our own congressmen, yeah. to approve Pentagon budgets that keep them rich. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, all young people and the people of Iraq pay with their lives. It is time to stop spending billions and trillions on war and to take care of our veterans, to build affordable housing, to provide universal health care in this country for every Oregonian who is living on the streets of Eugene, for, to stop this criminal administration, this impeached president, from starting another forever war that will only benefit fossil fuel corporations that are poisoning our planet and using our military as their own mercenaries. I'm running for Congress in the Democratic primary and we are building a grassroots campaign here in Oregon, the likes of which this district has never seen. That is why I need your support because while my opponent happily takes campaign cash from those who will profit from war with Iran, we never, ever will. He said today that the American people deserve to see an exit strategy. I believe for that him. we deserve better. There should be no entrance strategy. There should be an immediate end to any talk of escalation with Iran. We will do everything in our power to ensure that there is not a war with Iran because we know we share a vision of peace and justice. And here in Oregon, we believe we can lead that transition with our wind and our waves powering our towns because there's never been a war over sunshine and sunshine can power our society. Yeah. This is the dawn of a new decade and we're here because we believe it must be a decade of transformative change. A decade of the Green New Deal. Yeah. And it is just beginning. So I want you to take a look around at the people who are here today, and I want you to imagine 2030, January 4th, when we're entering the next decade, and all that we were able to accomplish, all the incredible change we were able to make when our country was on the brink of war, when our planet was on the brink of breakdown, we came together and we demanded better. We took a stand and we reclaimed our power to change this country. Thank you. Thank you for being here.